Do you understand the real makeup of mankind? How we're made in three different parts? We're going to talk about this. Some people think we've only got two. But I'm going to try and find us three this morning. Stay with me. Now, we're going to talk about man's makeup in three different elements. We find in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23 that the Bible says this. Maybe you have a Bible there. And the second part says, May the whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The whole spirit, soul, and body. Or, if you don't like that, turn to Hebrews 4 and verse 12. And this is a fascinating verse that some of you will know well. Let me read to you again. It says, The word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. So here again we find that there's a soul and a spirit, and it can be divided by the word of God. So here are three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Now, do you get that? And the Word of God can penetrate to divide. Uh, I was talking about this the other Friday evening. What does that really mean? I think it means that the Word of God can divide. It can come right in and separate our motives, our ideas, and show exactly what we're thinking and what our ideas are and where we're we going and why and the whole thing that is the power of the word of god but let's come back to these different parts first of all and i said this to you yesterday we begin with the body which is very obvious we know we have one and sometimes when it's sick we're only too aware of it that is the outer person it's made up of the five senses sight hearing our smell our taste our feel this is the body. And if you look into the scripture, we find, and I quoted it to you yesterday, that beautiful verse that talks of how wonderful we are. The texture of the body, Psalm 139 and verse 14. And the psalmist says, and it's David who's writing, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. If you know a nurse or a doctor, sit down with them and get them to explain to you the hormone system of the body or the nervous system of the body. Or if you know someone who's a brain surgeon, ask them to tell you about the brain and how it works. This body is magnificent because our God made it. And our God does all things well. And he made us perfectly. That's the way God does things. He took nothing. He made us. God created. And in his creation, he gave us this tremendous body. One of the problems is we abuse it. First of all, we don't exercise it. Secondly, we eat too much. Some people drink too much. And nowadays, many people put too many drugs in. And I mean that sometimes medically, sometimes illegally, but we put all sorts of drugs into this marvelous machine that the Lord our God has made, and I don't think that's what he intended. I have a feeling that it's so often our emotional upsets that makes the body sick and painful, and then we go to the drugs. Well, we'll come back on that in a moment. But the body has a wonderful texture. God designed it. The second thing we find in Paul's writing is, he says it's like a tent. One day it's just going to be wrapped up, because it's only temporary. The body we have is for this earth and for the time we're here. And once we die, that's finished. And that's why I have such a problem with these viewings. When we go to view a body, the person isn't there. All we're looking at is the tent. And then the third part is that we're told it's a temple. You find this in a couple of places where Paul's writing. And first of all, in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So going back to what we've said before, 
in each one of us the Holy Spirit dwells if we belong to Jesus Christ, and therefore our body should be fit for him to dwell in. It is a temple. He comes and he dwells in us. Then let's make sure it is worthy of him to dwell in. Now, I know in one sense it can never be worthy, and yet it can be right and we can make an effort. A lot of us don't want to make the effort to keep our bodies the way God made them. It's too easy, and sadly, in many senses, we have too much food in this country. When you think of a world that is starving, we are blessed and blessed and blessed again. But we need to be careful of how we keep the body. Secondly, the soul, the inner person. Now, I happen to believe this is the problem area because it deals with our emotions, our mind, our conscience, our consciousness, our awareness, our old nature. Remember I said yesterday from two, Genesis 2 verse 7, God breathed on man and he became a living soul. And it seems that it's the soul and the spirit that continues living when we die. But let's think a little bit more about the soul. Our emotions. Remember that God is emotional. Now, that is important because, you know, I think we get so light about sin that we forget how much it hurts the Lord our God. When you and I sin, he hurts. And because we read about sin and we hear about it on the news all the time, if we're not careful as Christian believers, we can take a very light view of sin. I don't think God ever does. And by the way, I think God laughs. Sometimes I look at some of God's people and I'm saddened to see that they're so dull. I think God has a tremendous sense of humor. If not, where did we get one from? And also we see in our Lord Jesus Christ what a tremendous sense of humor he has. First of all, how on earth did he put up with Peter if he didn't have a sense of humor? And if he didn't have laughter and a sense of humor, why did children always gather around him? I think Jesus was a very happy person. He had to be because he was perfect. So I think there is a sense of humor. And I think God weeps at times. I really do. When he sees what man does to man, when he sees what man has done to the whole created order, I think he just cries. And no wonder. We have emotions, and I believe with all my heart most of our physical problems begin in the emotions. No, I didn't say you don't have a pain. No, I didn't say you're not physically sick. I said most of what happens to us begins in the emotions, and the trouble is so few people can help us to put our emotions right. Our psychiatrists, our psychologists can tell us where they're wrong. That's fine. But how can they be reconstructed? Only through the mighty power of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit alone can purify, rebuild, make new our emotions. And it doesn't matter what part of our emotions have been affected, the Holy Spirit can heal because he is the creator. And that's why it's so vital that we come to know Jesus Christ, that we get our emotions back into balance. And even then, you find some Christians who are up and down. You see them one day, and everything's fine. You see them the next time, and oh, dear, everything's wrong. They have that roller coaster sort of life. And they have never let the Lord our God totally heal those emotions. Now, I didn't mean you're going to be perfect. But God brings them back into balance, and no one else can. What about our mind? Well, there's something very vital here. Most of us suffer where our minds have not really come under the control of God. We need to have our minds controlled by the Holy Spirit. We need to have our minds saturated in the Word of God. It's a very sad fact that many of us have been converted in our hearts and never converted in our minds. We think like the world and try and walk with Jesus. Your head needs turning round, and as you absorb the Word of God, so your head begins to come new in Jesus Christ. Our thinking is renewed, and that only comes 
through the knowledge of the Word of God, and there's no easy way. But we must move on, or we're going to have problems here. What about the Spirit, the inmost person? This is where God communicates with us. God is Spirit. He's given us a Spirit, and that's how He keeps in touch with us. It is the eternal part of man. The eternal part of man. You remember, I read to you yesterday from Romans 8, verse 6, where Paul talks about our spirit. Let me read to you again. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's it. That's the spirit of a person. Also notice, it is the part that comes alive unto Christ that I talked about yesterday. For the non-believer, the spirit is dead. And it is the spirit that goes on living. And that's why I said to you, it's such a problem to me to go to a viewing. I'm not viewing that person. That person has moved on to be with God or to be without God. But the spirit is not there. It is an empty tent that people dress up and talk about. That is empty. The real person, the soul, the spirit has continued to live. That's important to understand. We are spirit, we are soul, we are body. And it is the spirit, the soul that has become eternal. And we need to understand that. And you see, if you stop and think about it, how much time do you spend a day on your body? And how much time do you allot to your spirit? few minutes here, minute or two there. We don't pay attention to our spirit. We don't feed our spirit. We don't take time to be in the Word of God. We don't take time to pray. We don't take time to be alone with our Lord. And yet we want to be spiritual beings. It's very important that you look after your spirit. That is the part that came from God. That is the real part. God gave you a spirit and made us different from the animals. Do you understand that? Man is fearfully and wonderfully made, body, soul, spirit. And that is God's design for us. Look after the whole of your being until you become like Jesus Christ.